All right, and I am going to start sharing my screen so that we can all have access to the bulletin. All right, can you all see that? All right, cool. Um, for announcements, I don't think there's really all that much. Um, actually, let me double check. Um, because I don't really have any kind of announcement aside from one. Um, announcements, here we go. Yep, nope. No announcements this time, aside from, of course, it being Mother's Day. So, um, to all the mothers out there, um, happy Mother's Day. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day and that everyone um, in your family, every one of your friends um, expresses their, their appreciation for you because I know that being a mother is hard work. Um, so congratulations and thank you for everything you do. Um, I also know that today is difficult for a lot of people um, for a variety of different reasons. So um, I just, want you to know that you are seen and you are loved um even with everything that's going on so happy mother's day i hope you all have a great day um and if you're struggling if you would like to chat um i'm always here you have my phone number so feel free to text me or call me um i'm available all day today and of course then <laughs> in the coming weeks as well so with that um why don't we start with our gathering song, which is Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden's a play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lesson today is found in Acts 7, 55 to 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephan gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man and of the man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. All right, we'll read this. Further. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set before me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Second lesson and found in 1 Peter 2, 2 to 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, through rejected, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and they were destined to do, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that, I'm, that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, 
Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today is going to be slightly different for the sermon um, because um, the Synod actually prepared a sermon for us, um, which is helpful because I've also been fighting an infection for the past few days. So um, writing a sermon was just not going to happen. But um, we have a resource right here that um, I wanted to share with you. Um, so I'm going to play this. Please let me know if you can hear it. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work with uh, computer audio and all of that. So <laughs> just let me know if you can hear it. If not, we'll figure out something. Can you hear that? Sorry, Kim, what were you saying? The volume seems really, really low, okay. like barely audible. Okay. Um, hmm. it's, real, it's real muffled. Okay. Let me see if I can get my speaker, and we'll see if that works. <laughs> okay. This is the better. She works at Redwood, like with Kathy or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can move up. spinning there. How can we do this? Let me try to pull the audio up on my phone. Maybe that works better. Jesus said, do not be afraid. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. Is that better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let me just scroll back and then I'll make sure to <laughs> hit play at the same time. Jesus said, do not be afraid. In my father's house are many dwelling places or mansions or rooms. Right now, I have a new appreciation for that promise because for the past six weeks, this has been my room, a kid's bedroom 
transform into my home office. But mine isn't the only Zoom room seen by others these days. Many of us spend hours a day connected to people in dozens of Zoom rooms. These are our many rooms today. Twice a day, our Synod staff gathers together from their rooms, and all of us are connected on one screen together. In addition, your pastors and deacons and leaders regularly zoom in from their rooms, and suddenly one room literally becomes many rooms as we all zoom in together. As you can see, these aren't mansions. And after six weeks, most of us would say there aren't enough rooms in any of our homes to keep us safe. But we are grateful to have these places. The wish we longed for so many times before, I wish I could just have a month to stay at home, has come true. And yet, we wish it weren't so. We're here because we are afraid. Afraid of COVID-19 and getting sick. Afraid for our parents and kids and frontline workers. Afraid for our jobs and the economy. Afraid of death. And so we stay in these rooms and then we realize we need to get out. And so we walk. Every day since stay at home began, I've taken a two mile walk from our house to the local quarry. Over a hundred years ago, people from Europe immigrated to this area seeking a better life and worked in the granite quarries. The granite shelf here runs over 150 feet deep. The stones run in rich veins of red and pink and charcoal gray. Stones were etched like this to indicate where the slabs would be cut. The massive stones like this that you see were actually rejected for use back then, but they stand here as a testimony to the faith of our ancestors who worked in these quarries and who worked to organize Lutheran congregations where people would gather to hear the gospel spoken in German or Swedish or Norwegian, where they'd sing and pray together, enjoy their favorite foods, Kim, can you hear the sermon? No. All of a sudden it went, it didn't work. Oh, oh, right. Because I muted myself. I cannot do that. <laughs> I forgot. Um, let me back up a little bit and then <laughs> restart. Sure. to this area seeking a better life and worked in the granite quarries. But today those sanctuaries are created to this area right. seeking a better life and worked in the granite quarries. The granite shelf here runs over 150 feet deep. The stones run in rich veins of red and pink and charcoal gray. Stones were etched like this to indicate where the slabs would be cut. The massive stones like this that you see were actually rejected for use back then, but they stand here as a testimony to the faith of our ancestors who worked in these quarries 
and who worked to organize Lutheran congregations where people would gather to hear the gospel spoken in German or Swedish or Norwegian, where they'd sing and pray together, enjoy their favorite foods, treasure the community they shared, and pass on their culture to their children. Many of these congregational church buildings still stand, of course. You know them well. But today those sanctuaries are empty. You know how we always said, go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God at the end of worship? And each and every person would go out those doors to be the body of Christ in the world? We wanted the church to leave the sanctuary, to be deployed, to be what it was always supposed to be in the world. Well, it's come true, but in a way we never expected or wanted. And it's disorienting, it's hard work, it's frightening, and we feel like Philip, who said, Lord, we don't know where we're going. How can we know the way? Nobody's prepared us for anything like this. The gospel story for this week is one that we often associate with funerals, read to assure family and friends that Jesus is taking care of their loved ones into eternity, and to encourage all of us how to keep on living when our lives will never be the same again. When Jesus spoke these words, they had a similar purpose, of course. They had just shared the last supper they would ever eat together. Jesus had washed their feet and commanded them to love one another as he loved them. He told them he would only be with them a little while longer. The glorious years of teaching, healing touch, shared meals, and singing psalms would soon be a memory. In a short time, Peter the Rock would deny him. By afternoon of the next day, Jesus would be crucified and life would never be the same again. Knowing they'd have a hard time handling all that he told them, Jesus tried to prepare them for what was ahead. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Well, how does that sound to you today? I remember how when I was a kid, if a grown-up told me not to be afraid, I was pretty sure there was something I should be afraid of. And Jesus wants them to believe that even though he's not going to be beside them, his relationship with them will not change. He will need them to keep on living the mission he had lived. About 2,000 years later then, that's exactly what you are doing. You and congregations miss each other and just want to be together again. Your pastors are working harder than ever. Many have been learning new technology. Everyone is rethinking every movement, movement in worship, enlisting lay leaders to call people who are homebound, and reinventing faith formation online when students are doing everything for school online. Many have become 24-7 homeschoolers, in addition to serving as your pastor, and the weight of all this is heavy. All of you have found life drastically transformed, setting up your own home office, teaching your kids, missing your grandkids and parents, working on the front lines, sewing masks, getting out to do spring planting, and worrying about what's going to happen with your retirement or with meat processing and the whole economy. And we cry with Philip, Lord, we don't have a clue how to navigate through a pandemic. How can we know the way? I know that all of us have experienced crises in life, things for which we were never prepared. A sudden illness, the death of a spouse or parent or child, the loss of a job, the ending of a marriage, the end of a friendship. And again and again in my ministry, I have heard people remark, there's no way I could have gotten through this experience without God, without my faith, without my church. 
I'm reminded of one of the amazing people I've had the pleasure of knowing in my ministry, Thorpe Running, whose funeral I presided 10 years ago, April 30th. Thorpe was the son of Concordia College artist Cyrus Running. He was a professor of Spanish and Spanish, Spanish literature and a recognized scholar of Latin American poetry. Thorpe studied the writings of Jorge Luis Borges, an Argentinian author, who said, nothing is built on stone, everything on sand, but our duty is to build as if the sand were stone. Thorpe was also an amazing triathlete, riding his bike to teach at St. John's University daily. But in 1999, while on a training ride, Thorpe steered away from a patch of fresh gravel, loose rocks on the road, headed for the grass, and in an instant, his life was changed forever. I will never forget getting the call from his daughters, going to ER, and hearing that Thorpe would be a quadriplegic. I couldn't believe it. Not this triathlete, not because of some stupid gravel. But Thorpe's life was built on a firm foundation. And during the next 11 years, his heart didn't turn to stone. He didn't sit around in self-pity, nor wonder why this happened, or about the way forward. Instead, he simply became ever more compassionate, more perceptive, more courageous, more gracious to everyone. Supported by his wife, Cheryl, and surrounded by a circle of caregivers, Thorpe utilized his wheelchair and computer technology to teach his students, greet his friends, join in worship, and provide an unmovable presence to everyone who knew him. He knew who he was and whose he was. He built his life as if the sand were stone. Since mid-March, our country has been forced to decide how we are going to live, how are we going to move forward when it feels like we're on shifting sand and we don't know the way to go. We don't choose the tragedies that come into our lives. Bad things happen because we are not perfect. Our bodies aren't invincible to disease or injury. We hurt one another, intentionally or unintentionally. And sometimes people suffer because of the brokenness of whole communities or nations. This disease right now makes it feel like everything around us is shifting. And yet, in the midst of all the uncertainty, some things become stronger. Being in this together, being at home together, has forced us to slow down, pay attention, sort out what's important, and what we need to let go. After the 9-11 attacks, theologian Phyllis Tickle said that she saw the people of New York burned through to compassion. I think today each of us can name stories of generosity and compassion and loving actions that ordinary people are taking on just because they care. Our isolation is moving us to reach out to people we've lost touch with and to visibly express our gratitude to the people sacrificing themselves to care for others, provide our food, protect our communities, keep things running. People have expressed new spiritual hungering, and many are joining in worship services and opportunities for prayer for the first time. You are experiencing how to be the church out of the building, in your homes, connected through screens and phones and Facebook and mail, by whatever means have been available in the place where you live. You're connected to the other 234 congregations of our Synod across the geographical area of southwestern Minnesota. You've known your need for God to be a rock and a refuge and a strong fortress. You have experienced what it means to be living stones built not into a sanctuary, but into a spiritual house. 
There's a story in the Old Testament that tells how King David offered to build God a beautiful house of cedar so God would have some place to live. And God replied, you know, David, I've been doing very well, leaving you and living with your people wherever you went. Did I ever once complain and ask you to build me a house to live in? I claimed you and blessed you. I've been with you through everything. So here's the deal. I will build you a house. That is, I'll make you a house of people. Down the road, okay, there will be a house built for me. But more important than that is that you, my people, are my house, the place where I most want to dwell. Later in the New Testament, the earliest followers of Jesus saw themselves as built together into God's temple. Unlike their neighbors who worship their various gods only in temple buildings, Peter thinks of the early Christians themselves as living stones, worshiping together in small house church gatherings and communities of Jesus followers. These living stones gather together to sing psalms of praise, to pray, and to hear the words of Jesus crucified and risen. We tend to think of church as a building, as in we're going to church or we can't be in church now. But in the New Testament, the word church appears once, only in Matthew, and it refers to the people called out to a meeting, called to assemble. Today, the church is still being called out, still assembling, much like people did in those house churches 2,000 years ago, not in a sanctuary, but with the safety and technology available to us today. And you are indeed doing that in a variety of ways, as a gallery of faces appear in a Zoom call, as greetings and emoji hearts rise in a chat, as friends call each other on the phone to check on how they're doing, or share a Bible study together over the phone, as people look through their contacts list and pray for the people they see there, or send them a note. As people of all ages sew masks to keep people safe or share clothing for those who are homeless, loving your neighbors as you bring healing and help and hope in so many ways. Jesus Christ continues to build you as the household of God transformed for today. Come to Christ, that living stone rejected by people, but in God's sight chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. Or as St. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, So then you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You know, as much as you and I feel alone today, as much as the isolation and loneliness threaten to overwhelm you, you are not alone. You are gathered into the embrace of Jesus Christ, the stone that was rejected, who knew every betrayal and denial and pain that you and I will ever know and was finally put to death on a cross. Sometimes we wonder where God has gone. But if you want to see the very heart of God, then look to Jesus on the cross and see the length to which self-sacrificing love will go for you and for me and for the sake of this whole world. And having seen him there, then see him again on Easter morning because it's there that you will see the power of God that rolled away that stone so that life and love and light might be turned loose on earth forever. Dear friends, these are troubling days. We're afraid. We don't know much about the way to go. Life seems like shifting sand. But as the prophet said so long ago, look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. You stand on Jesus Christ the cornerstone and foundation. 
You are living stones connected wherever your room may be, together even though apart, because you are built into the household of God. Whether you are part of a church congregation or a new friend dropping in today, you are precious in God's sight. In Jesus Christ, God is with you and will never let you go. Amen. After that great sermon, let us continue with our hymn of the day. The Church of Christ in every age, beset by change, but spirit-led, must claim and test its heritage, and keep on rising from the dead. Across the world, across the street, the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and never live before they die. Then let the servant church arise, a caring church that longs to be a partner in Christ's sacrifice and clothed in Christ's humanity. For he alone whose blood was shed can cure the fever in our blood and teach us how to share our bread and feed the starving multitude. We have no mission but to serve in full obedience to our Lord, to care for all without reserve, and spread his liberating word. And now along with the church, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need.
Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is set, sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care. We remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. I would like to offer some time for us to um, to share our gifts, everything we have with either our church or our parish or any organization that does God's work, um, caring for the people that are most badly suffering right now. Um, I will keep about two or three minutes of silence, um, just so those of us who are in a position to do so can um, can prepare gifts. Um, of course, as always, please don't bankrupt yourself. Um, but if you are in a position, please consider giving to an organization of your choosing, whether that be our church or not, um, that is doing a lot of really hard work in the world right now. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. 
And now gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Can everybody read that? I feel like that's a little bit small. <laughs> All right. So let us finish with our sending song. Oh, Christ, your heart compassionate for every human pain. Its beating was the pulse of God, its breath God's vast domain. The heart of God, the heart of Christ, combined in perfect rhyme to write God's love in human deeds, eternity in time. As once you welcomed those cast down and healed the sick, the blind, so may all bruised and broken lives through us your help still find. Lord, join our hearts with those who weep that none may weep alone and help us bear another's pain as though it were our own. O oh Christ, create new hearts in us that beat in time with yours, that joined by faith with your great heart become love's open doors. We are your body, risen Christ, our hearts, our hands we yield that through our life and ministry your love may be revealed. O oh, love that made the distant stars, yet marks the sparrow's fall, whose arms stretched wide upon a cross, embrace and bear us all. Come make your church a servant church that walks your servant ways, whose deeds of love rise up to you, a sacrifice of praise. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. All right, I will stop sharing my screen and stop recording and then we can gather for a coffee hour.